Hey everyone, welcome to the EdTech Show. I'm Dan Spada and today I'm showing you how to use Flipgrid in your classroom. Now, I have to be honest with you guys, Flipgrid has been around for a while, but I had personally never used it. I'd seen it around on different sites and things like that, uh, but I was recently accepted into this HP Teaching Fellow program, and as part of Microsoft's Reinvent the Classroom, myself and some of the other fellows were talking about some of the tools that we've been using, and so many teachers were talking about the amazing ways that they had been using Flipgrid that I just had to try it out for myself, and I instantly fell in love with it. So today I'm going to show you how to get it set up in your classroom. It's super quick, and once you start, you are going to become addicted like I am. So the first thing is to head to flipgrid.com and you can sign up, it's free, which I love. And then you can either sign up with your Google account or your Microsoft account. And so I'm gonna use my personal account here just so I can show you how easy it is to get it set up. Uh, so the first thing you do is click on new grid and then you can select what type of community type and then you can select what type of grid you want. Uh, I'm gonna use school email just so you can see how you would set it up for your students. But they do have other options like student ID or PLCs and you can even make one public. So the first thing we're going to do is name our grid. So I'm going to call this research project. You can then either go to the next or if you want to customize your flip code, you can change that. So I'll just call this Spada and go to next. And now you have to add the domain for your school email. So ours is at suffieldstudent.org. And I'll add that. And then I'm going to launch my grid. And now you could either set it or you could customize. Now, customizing is a good idea so you can set it the exact way that you want, um, which you can have them. So one of the features is you can have it notify you when new videos are added. Uh, you can allow the students to download their videos after they've created a response. Uh, and then there's a couple more where you can allow students to receive emails so they know uh, when new topics are created. You can add captions. And you can customize if you have any pictures you want to add. We'll do the cat with the glasses. And then we'll update our grid. And if you have other teachers that you're teaching with, you can add co-pilots. And what we'll do is we'll create a new topic. And so in this new topic, uh, we can create a topic title. So we'll put proposal. So what I'm going to want my students to do is propose what they're going to do their research project on. And then you can limit the time response. So you can have it really brief in 30 seconds if you just want the students to get to the point. If you wanted to elaborate a little bit more, you can go all the way up to five minutes. We'll just pick a minute for this one. And so then you can put the topic description or the question. So for me, I want the students to explain what they're going to be doing their research project on. So I'll just put, let me know what your research project is and why you want to study that. And then you can make it so that you have to approve every video that comes through, or you can just have it so that the students upload it themselves. And again, you can have that conversation with them about digital citizenship. You can make it active. And so that means you can stop it at any time. Um, if you didn't want to leave a written question, I can record a video. And so I can just say, Hey everybody, let me know what you guys want to do your research project on and tell me why did you choose that to research? So one of the fun things is that it asks you to snap a selfie and your students will have to do the same thing. So you can add different kinds of like emojis and stickers and all kinds of fun things. So if you want it to be silly, you can make it silly. So you can make it kind of funny or you can keep it serious. It's up to you depending on your style. And so now that I've created it, I can actually share this out with my class. So you can do either share with class, you can send them the flip code, you can give them the link, you can embed it on a website, you can share it right to Google Classroom. So lots of options with the way that you wanna share it out to your students. And so now I'm logged in as a student, just so you can kind of see what this looks like. You can see it's called proposal. Here's my prompt. The students can watch this video. And then for them, they can go and tap to record. So it's going to look exactly the same as when I recorded earlier. 
So then the students can go ahead and record their own. Hey, Mr. Spada, I'm doing my research project on the Ozark Mountains because we just finished Where the Red Fern Grows, and I'm interested in learning more about the setting of that book. And then if the students mess up, they can redo it, or they can add a sticky note if they wanted to add a little message to their video. Record their own. Hey, Mr. Spada, I'm doing my research. And they would go through the same exact screens where they snap a selfie, they can make all those changes, and then they submit. And one of the things that I love about Flipgrid is how clean and organized it all is. Um, so as the students continue to add their videos in, it makes it super easy to be able to watch them all. You can share them. The students can see each other's work. Uh, so I can't say enough great things about Flipgrid. Uh, my only regret is that it took me so long to use it, but it's just got so many different applications in the classroom. It allows students to be able to see each other's work, which I always love uh, because they're able to learn from each other. Sometimes seeing those videos from each other prompts further discussion. Um, and then even being able to hear from every student is really helpful because for some students, they need extra time to think about their ideas. Um, and if they mess up, they can delete and start again. So uh, for me, Flipgrid is my newest favorite tool. And it's one that all the teachers can use in their classrooms, regardless of their subject areas. So if you guys are using Flipgrid in your classroom, please let me know how in the comments section below or tweet at me at Dan Spada. And if you found this video to be helpful, please share it with any friends, colleagues, or anyone who might benefit from using Flipgrid in their classroom. For more information and videos, please visit danielspada.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.